Hi friends, welcome to My Giant Life 2018 um, for May. May's um, prompt is strings. So I have all these copies of this character I've been using since January for each prompt. Just check them out in Annalise's Mix Media Everything um, Facebook group. And uh, I'm there with Anne, Anne Williamson. Um, as well as Gina Aarons and um, Cindy, Cindy Utter and we are all doing this um, journey together with this My Giant Life this year. So I've been, we've been doing this since January and we're going to continue for the rest of the year and so this time my prompt is strings. So I'm making my character that I keep using I'm challenging myself to use the same character. <laughs> Different sizes perhaps, but the same character. I'm leaving out her wings this time, um, but that I made in her first, I added wings to her when I first designed her. Anyhow, um, I'm using the same character and that was a challenge I wanted to challenge myself to use them for all 12 prompts. So I decided for the strings to do a puppet. And that's where I'm going with this one. So I'm making her her limbs and that kind of thing and cutting the pieces. I want them to look really puppety. <laughs> if puppety, that's a word. And <laughs> work with what I'm doing. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting them on card and I'm using my glue stick just to glue them down. I give them a little bit more strength. And um, I cut them out after. And I just uh, color them up on here a bit. So I'm taking some watercolor pencils as well, I think there's just Durant, as well as um, right now I'm doing some gesso on it because I did some watercolor pencil in a little bit of a tan, but her skin and all the other ones was like a really white kind of color and I didn't want to change it too much from my originals. So I went over it with the white to kind of really make her pasty <laughs> and using some Posca pens as well and pretty much dead black Pasca pen there but using some on her cheeks and just trying to make her character the same as usual that I do with the other months I've done in the past. So here's what she looks like. I did some Mod Podge over it just to kind of seal her down. Now I'm working on my background so I'm gessoing the whole thing up with gesso. Drying that up. I'm making the bottom part of the canvas into a floor. I'm trying to make a stage presence or something like that. So I'm making the bottom part of the canvas here, designing that. So I just pencil that in and I just use my black and I'm using paints from Deco Art. I'm using my black traditions here I believe and then I use a white paint from Deco Art and that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the floor first. kind of wanted that checkered look. I did end up changing it closer to the end a bit. Um, decided that black and white was just too close to the colors of my girl because you see my girl is a lot of black and white, really light skin and the black and white shirt. So I ended up adding color to my floor. But I think it looks good. So I wanted it to have a bit of, of depth, depth <laughs> so I'm making it look like you're looking right forward into the floor and that's where I'm going with that and have something that um, our puppet can be standing on and presented I guess on I did record all this <laughs> I did. and then I'm doing it into the white and again just had to do that even though it just wasn't quite the same with just the gesso on the background and I did have some pencil marks and I wasn't quite perfect with the black so I just thought it would really be helpful to get in the white and make it a little bit more crisp. I wasn't trying to make it too too straight it was more of a whimsical feel I was going for but I still want to make it look as good as I could. I had to speed this up like a lot at the end of this all it was like two and a half hours long and I couldn't believe it. So this background I have put the, the rest of the white that I had and I put burnt sienna in there a fluid, in the fluid acrylics from DecoArt and I wanted the background a bit mm, 
um, darker but mysterious, a little bit of light, and I also add a little bit more darkness. But here's antiquing cream. So I add the antiquing cream all the way around, kind of even on the floor and edges, and I wet it up a little bit, trying to pull some of it up, and make a kind of a frame with the antiquing cream. I love antiquing cream because it's not like you're putting black directly on it. It's it's actually easy to clean off and kind of adjust it. So I ended up putting a little bit more on, a little bit off, and then a little bit more on. So it's really easy to work with. So that antiquing cream is also from Deco Art, and that was carbon black that I put on there, and that's how it turned out. So I cut out my girl, and then I have to cut her limbs kind of apart to make her look more puppety. <laughs> there goes that word again. The one thing I wasn't sure about was her head, if I had to have it attached to the body or not. So I ended up taking it right off, taking, getting rid of her neck, and... I was going to put her higher, but then I ended up putting her lower, which made me decide not to add her wings because the floor and the dark floor even though I did change the colors up a bit it was just too much darkness so then I use that carbon black and I just paint a little bit along my edges and I kind of wipe them off just a little bit so so I kind of paint on wipe off and you get a little bit of an inking effect I just didn't want to pull out another thing and have my inking pad out. I thought this was easy enough. I still had some on my plate and it worked really nice for edging, darkening my edges and making them look finished. And I'm doing around her head. So here I I'm kind of placing her higher than I thought I actually was going to pl place her, but ended up putting her a little bit lower. I did end up using the antique cream. You see me there putting a little antique cream on the floor. That's her shadow. But she did end up moving down further down, pretty much her whole body onto the floor, forward onto the floor. Now I am sketching, I'm using her kind of there but I'm sketching the fingers and this is one of the reasons why I ended up having to move it down it just didn't look right needed more distance between her and the strings I'm drawing sketching up some hands up here to work the strings so I'm kind of sketching those out and it's working out where it just where she was lower needed to be a little bit lower to work I like the the long strings in between them, so it worked out good. I just left the wings out so it wouldn't look so dark. Now I'm using a very peachy color. It's a peach silk for the the um, fingers right now, and the reason is that I have such a dark background, and I thought that that would be a nice color, um, almost skin tone to use with the different background there because that background does have the burnt sienna and the white and also the, the carbon black so I thought it would be get away with that peachy really peachy color and then I'm here I'm using the sienna burnt sienna just to do the edging and the dark parts of the palms of the hands and the shadowed parts of the fingernails and whatnot and it really does come together when I use my um, pencil, my carbon pencil, which I don't have up here, but you guys see it. Uh, it's a water soluble pencil, and it's a B. I think it's a B6. And I just go around the edges with that, and it really pulls it together. And it was working some of the sienna, burnt sienna, and some of the peach, mixing it in a little bit more. It was a little bit too of a reddish brown, and I wanted to make it just blend in a little bit more. So I'm just working that in there. But like I said, it really came together here. I'm working that a little bit lighter. Then I add a little bit more. But it really came together when I used the carbon pencil, carbon water soluble one. And then I just put a. L oh, I ended up putting some nice gold 
um, that's what I'm putting on there now. Now this is like an interference gold and this is really neat because it kind of goes on clear but when it hits color certain colors you can see a sheen of gold on the fingers uh, I thought that was a really nice tinge, tint to it and you can't really see it unfortunately but it's got a bit of a gold tint in it so I put that on all the lighter peach colors and here I'm going with the water brush onto what that pencil water soluble pencil just to make it dark edges but that gold really did tone down the peachiness and I like it it's gave, gave it a mystical, majestical feel to it to me. Here I'm doing a little penciling down <coughs> with my where my puppet strings should be. I ended up actually kind of wiping them away and doing them under the strings because I was misguiding in where they should go. They didn't quite follow my strings perfectly to the limbs, so I ended up kind of wetting a cloth and cleaning that up after and redoing that. But that's what happens. So what I'm doing here is I'm tying all these little strings. These are um, what is this called? Embroidery floss and then I just pulled them out two by two and I'm tying them together in little bows and putting them on the fingers, gluing them onto the fingers. So then the fingers are kind of bow tied onto the bows and then I'm just twisting them up to where so the two that are together will be like more like a string thicker twisting them up and I kind of put them together with the parts of the limbs that I want them in so the hands I did twist the rope or the string around them um, managed to try to make a loop of a tie on those at the end there I put the head to one so I put them all in different limbs and that's where I was like realizing that my where I penciled in my strings to where my strings were actually going it wasn't matching so I just fixed that up and then I realized I wanted more string, so I had to put her down, further down too. <laughs> and because of that, I realized that the coloring of the floor was just too dark with her dark shirt and her dark um, shorts that she was wearing, so I had to fix that up. Change it up! But that's what it all mixed media is about, it's kind of just last minute changes to make your art work for you. So I'm just kind of putting some of the strings, most of them behind, but um, a couple in front, I think, and then tying them up around her wrist a bit there. So here's I'm cleaning up those marks, and then I'm fixing them up to where they actually go, and then using my water brush to make the nice shading. And there we go, tying up that one around her wrist. The other ones are just glued in behind or in front or along the side of her legs. So I put some Mod Podge all over her to kind of get her pasting down and looking good and on the floor I put it all over the floor too the floor then I'm like looking at her and I'm thinking this is too blendy um, if you're looking at it at a distance you really could she blends in too well with the floor so I wasn't happy with that and that's when I came in with the um, orange from deco art here and then I just threw in that and I kind of watered it down and I just put it all over the floor and this is in a fluid acrylic as well and then I put some gold over top and definitely didn't like that and this is where I get away with playing with it a little bit I'm like oh no putting more water on there trying to get that off now you can't see um, perhaps the gold on there but I was really not happy with it so I came in with black and redid all the floor because the gold was really popping on the black and it's just not looking I like gold but it just didn't do it for this time I know every time I always say that gold fixes everything but it didn't fix this so I went all over the black with the gold it just didn't look right on the floor no I went all over the black with black again. Went all over what gold was on the black. I'm sorry, my computer's making noise. Anyhow, now I take this this cream stuff that I have here, and it's got a purple hue to it. So I'm doing that purple hue. Now this is really weird stuff. It's the interference, and it's violet, and it's fluid acrylic from Deco Art, and it goes on like white, 
but it goes purple. So then when I put it on the black, the black looked really purple, and you can't see it on the video, but it looked really, really cool. And I put it on the orange, and it had a purple tinge to it as well. But it really made the black pop kind of purple. So I actually like that. And I put it all over the edge, and you could see on the edge, but on the video you can't see. You could see maybe a touch of purple tint. And I like that. So I splattered on some black splatters, and I was just totally liking that purple on there. I wish you guys could see it better, but I don't know if you can spot them on the pictures better. I'm just highlighting a few spots on the hands here. And these inter they are interesting, these um, unique uh, colors that kind of, I guess you just put them on certain colors and they really pop. Here I put in the crackle cream crackle. And this is Crackle Glaze, Glaze from Deco Art. And it cracks like glass, looks like little crackles in there. And you can see some of it. You can see some of the purple in there too. And I did that just on the floor, so the floor had like a glass look. And then the walls or the upper part was really just canvas. And that is it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I ended up painting her shoes red, and that was about it. And um, all the products except for the deco, uh, the Mod Podge was from Deco Arts. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye bye.